Trade marks refer to marks that are used in trade. These marks are used to identify or distinguish goods and services that are used in business. By trade, we refer to a business. So, to understand trademarks, we need to understand what businesses are. A business can be defined as an organization or an economic system where goods and services are exchanged for one another or for money. So, we understand it as an exchange of goods and services for money or consideration. Now, this brings a couple of things into play. We understand a business as an interaction and this interaction pertains to a thing there is a thing involved and this thing has value so there is an interaction interaction can have multiple connotations it can be a dealing it can be a exchange and and it also means it just not means that there is an act it also means that there are parties who perform the act so we have parties as well so an act requires at least two people to to deal with each other so the parties here could be the buyer or the seller or or the lessee or lesser so you have an act which is done by parties which is what we refer to as interaction now the thing here in business refers to a good or a service now you could also say products you could say a merchandise but largely this comprises and that's the reason we have the gst tax that is goods and services tax because the goods and services is understood to encompass everything that can be a part of trade the third thing the to to fall within the definition of a business this exchange or this interaction of the thing the interaction of the thing has to be for a value which means money passes hands or the exchange is itself of valuable goods now if it is not for value then we don't call it a business for instance a uh, father gives allowance to his son or to his daughter we don't call that as a business transaction it can be a familial transaction or a friend gives money to his friend in a time of need that's again again a friendly transaction or a person gives a donation to assist people in distress that is again a charitable transaction so if the value pertains to the exchange of goods and service then we call that a business transaction so the, there is an interaction by which we mean it could be an act or it could which involves parties and that act involves a thing and the thing by which we mean it refers to a goods it refers to by which we mean it refers to goods or services which are exchanged or which are dealt with for a value and the value here is money or something that can be computed in terms of its value by value we mean money this definition is important because every business also requires some form of investment and we saw that investment in intangible leads to intangible assets so we had already seen that businesses do invest money and in, it need not be just money it could be efforts it could be people r and d we saw a whole lot of things that can fall within the ambit of investment and it is the investment that actually produces these goods and services so every business requires some form of investment and enough customers because you need people to buy your stuff to whom its output can be sold on a consistent basis in order to make profit so there is an investment there are people who would buy it from you customers and there is an output from you which is your goods or services and you are in 
for making a profit so you're not a charitable business so businesses or are the ones which use trademarks and the word trade itself refers to business now we try to understand the use or how trademarks came into being because when you understand trademark as something that is tied to business and a business is an interaction an exchange or a dealing which involves a thing a thing could be a good or a service and which comprises of some value which can be computed in money then we know that it's a business transaction or a business activity trademarks are used solely in business activities or the use or the evolution of trademarks came around in business activities which is also true to the other intellectual property rights that we have covered so far patents also we tried to industrial activity and there had to be a commercial purpose or what we call usefulness or utility tied to patents so intellectual property rights share this common theme that they are relevant for commercial activity or they are used for the purpose of businesses so trademarks came up as a means to promote and sell goods and services and goods and services earlier it was just goods but later on we added services because when trademarks evolved initially the focus was only on goods now we will see when the services part came into being so traders usually used brands as a means to to identify their goods and this came up by not only identifying the goods and services they were selling but also to identify the business names so a trademark can be something that identifies a business name the entity that does the business a corporation or a organization it could also mean uh, the product that is sold or the services that are offered so this came about because in a marketplace where there are multiple people offering the same good or the same service there is a need to distinguish these services or goods and the need to distinguish competitive services and competitive product led to the businesses who were offering these competitive products and services to distinguish their products and services by way of marks you may say that the best way to distinguish a product or a service is by making the product unique or the service unique yes that is certainly a way in which you can distinguish your goods but certain goods it is very hard for you to distinguish or to make them unique from what they actually are for instance a safety pin there is not much uniqueness you can bring into a safety pin without actually changing its function or if if you make bring too much uniqueness people may not even identify the product so you could have trade names which will bring this uniqueness for instance paper clips were also known as gem clips gem refers to a trade name and sometimes products are the generic name of the products may be attributed to certain trade names because of the common use now gem clips refer referring to paper clips is one thing thermos again a trade name referring to flasks is another instance xerox referring to the product that comes out of the emissions that is a photostat or a photocopy is again an instance of a trade name being commonly used in identifying the product velcro again a trade name and we understand uh, the product by the trade name itself so trade names are used to distinguish and to identify competing products a trademark refers to any word name symbol or device which are used to identify and distinguish goods and services now this is the definition of the trademark a trademark in simple terms is a mark and when we say a mark we refer to something that can be graphically symbolized or something which can be shown graphically which is attributed to a trade or a business marks have existed 
since time immemorial and their usage in business has also been there for a long time now craftsmen who sold goods used marks to identify their goods even now if you look at a work of art there is a tendency for the artist to sign his or her name in the piece of art now again this was meant not as a trademark but it was meant as a means for a craftsman to tell the world that a product belongs to him or he was the creator of the product the use of marks for businesses to identify goods increased around the middle ages which was a time when productivity increased and competition also increased and this saw the need to distinguish goods and services amongst people who were selling these goods and services and industrialization also played a role uh, the growth of markets especially which allowed for competing products to be sold required that these products can be distinguished in some way and and the, as i mentioned the distinguishing feature need not be just in the quality because the quality can be a distinguishing feature but it also had to be in a way in which customers could identify it you will see that marks over a period of time gained reputation and goodwill and it become a symbol and it became a symbol of quality so trademarks were tied to ownership by ownership we mean the ability to identify that certain goods and services came from a particular entity historically we know know that people used to be concerned about identifying the products and the services they were selling for instance people who dealt with cattle had a way by which they could earmark the cattle so that if the cattle got lost they could identify that as the owners and claim it back people who were selling goods which had to be shipped across the seas had a way to mark their goods so that if the ship got wrecked there was a way in which the person who shipped the items could identify the goods based on the mark so this was an initial way by which when a trader or a seller of goods when he had to have some kind of control over his goods he would put a mark on it so that marks could identify the owner marks initially used to be tied to liability by liability we mean uh, when goods were sold in a particular market and that market they the if the if the quality of the goods was unsatisfactory then the people who ran the market would identify the goods by the person who had sold it and a way to identify unsatisfactory goods or goods which did not meet the required standards was by identifying them with a the mark now guilds and trade organizations in the early times identified goods by marks as a means of liability so if someone sold unsatisfactory goods then it was easy for these trade organizations to identify the owner of those goods and cause some kind of liability on the owner either the owner had to replace the goods or he had to give back the consideration the money he received for the goods so initially trademarks evolved as a source of attributing liability for bad goods over a period of time they came to be attributed to quality now quality is a signal which tells the customer that the customer can go ahead and buy the product so quality leads to a purchasing decision so the quality part 
came as a means of attributing a certain amount of trust on the products that were sold bearing a particular mark so the mark over the period of time became symbols of quality so earlier they were symbols of liability and slowly they moved to take a new function that of quality and as businesses flourished and as businesses became to be marketed on a large scale and as branding and marketing and advertising led to the spread of brands using trademarks there was a another quality that came in for trademarks that trademarks were tied to reputation so now you could buy a nike shoe or purchase coca cola because the brands had a reputation which conveyed quite a lot of information to the buyer so a person who bought a coca cola product would know that the reputation of a company that is more than 100 years old would stand by its product or when a person purchased a nike shoe or an athletic apparel then he would know that the company's r&d department and the design department would stand by the product and there is a reputation of the company that is transferred through the brand this essentially made the brands a valuable asset in itself now we saw that intangible assets are created by an investment into that goes into it and brands are intangible assets and the investment that goes into creation of brands or trademarks happen over a long period of time so reputation marks trademarks were tied to reputation now this probably is the stage at which most brands are because every brand is trying to create a reputation and trademarks do play a big role in creating reputation but we also have another stage where customers identify themselves with a brand so the brand the trademark becomes a source of identity for the customer for instance when we refer to a person as an apple fanboy or a person who uses only apple products then the person wants himself to be identified as a person who uses a particular product so when people start identifying themselves with trademarks some people have referred to this as a kind of a cult that gets created because of the trademarks themselves we are referring to a phase where trademarks no longer perform the traditional function of liability quality or reputation now they perform an additional function of people being able to identify themselves through a mark for instance a person who uses a mont blanc pen he wants a particular image to be conveyed about him he wants the pen to be a part of his identity or when we refer to a ferrari driver again the fact that a person purchases the car and uses it becomes a part of a person's identity so this is also what most companies are trying to get to because once you are able to become a part of your customer's identity then the customers would do the job of advertising and, and these uh, this is called uh, this is referred to as brand evangelism where the customers go forward and become brand ambassadors so we have seen trademarks go through uh, uh, so we have seen trademarks go from uh, liability so we have seen trademarks go from attributing liability to unsatisfactory goods to becoming signals of quality then becoming symbols of reputation and now especially for certain marks becoming a part of the customers or the users identity itself legal protection for trademarks started around the 16th century when traders used it to signify the source now the 
main concern was to ensure that people don't get defrauded now a trader when uses uh, when he uses a mark the trader signifies that the goods are from his enterprise and because customers know the source of origin through the mark it was possible for the trader to identify others who would try to pass off their goods as the trader's goods so it became a way in which misconceptions about the product or misrepresentations of the product was prevented because now the trader had a mark and the trader would tell that my goods come with a particular quality and this mark identifies the goods that i am selling around the 19th century the relief by which a trader could stop another person who was trying to sell similar goods using a similar mark like that of the trader was through a relief called the relief of passing off passing off simply means somebody else is passing off their product as yours so you have a remedy this remedy was given by the british courts by the chancery courts in united kingdom now passing off was the first relief that came to protect trademarks and passing off still exists when it comes to protecting unregistered trademarks now the relief of passing off was tied to the reputation that the trader had and to the goodwill that the trader had evolved over a period of time so again the focus was on preventing misrepresentation and the relief offered was to stop the person who was misrepresenting his goods as the goods of the trader because trader had a reputation and goodwill in the market so till the 19th century there was no registration for trademarks marks attained reputation and goodwill by usage the fact that the trader used it in the market over a period of time and gained reputation was enough to stop others from using similar marks and the relief was the relief of passing off registration came around the year 1875 in england because the history that we are looking at for the trademarks act is the history of the evolution of trademark law in england because the first act that came around in india was a act that was of a british import so we will see just as we had in the case of patent law the origin of indian trademark law is also from british statutes so registration came around 1875 till such time there was no registration every mark was essentially an unregistered trademark and the way in which you could protect an unregistered trademark was by the relief of passing off which was nothing but approaching the court saying that somebody else is passing off their products as your product and asking the court to injunct them or to stop them from doing that now the relief that a person would claim was saying that the competitor was misrepresenting and was deceiving the customers so deception or deceptive similarity or something that could deceive people still remains at the center or still remains the focal point of trademark law so if there is deception or confusion with regard to the source or with regard to the origin trademark law will step in so these are two things that we need to bear in mind when we understand trademarks that when goods and services deceives customers or it causes confusion or there is a likelihood to cause confusion then the trademark law will allow the trademark holder to stop the goods or services that are causing the deception or the confusion so deceptive similarity and confusion are things that trademark law 
will factor in while granting a relief to a trader. Now, why should we protect trademarks? Now, trademarks perform various functions. We had seen that over a period of time, they um, they were they were used to attribute liability. Then they were used to as a, sim a signal of quality. Then they became a symbol of reputation. And now there is also cult following of trademarks, as we have seen. So the origin was to identify the goods with a particular seller so that still remains the 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 function of a trademark is to identify the origin now we also saw that later on the fact that the trader would use the mark repeatedly and it it gained a quality and a guarantee function because now because the trader had a reputation he would also want people to repeatedly buy his product and which we saw as one of the reasons by which we understand a business a business is something which continues over a period of time selling goods and services to customers so the quality was required or some kind of a guarantee was expected for a business to continue and there is always there is also an investment or an advertising function the fact that all the money that is pooled in for marketing can now be attributed as something that goes towards building the reputation now one instance is if you look at any trademark dispute a uh, dispute between two uh, two parties where a trademark holder alleges that his mark has been infringed by another person now when the trademark holder files a case before the court of law asking the court to stop the person from using his mark and there are various other reliefs that the trademark holder can claim you will find that the trademark holder will in most cases mention the amount of time money and resources the trademark holder has spent in marketing and advertising now this is because trademarks are understood to have developed some kind of reputation by advertising and by marketing so if your marketing revenue or advertising revenue is substantial that is a way for you to demonstrate though they'd not be the only way to demonstrate that your mark has attained a reputation and goodwill by the fact that you have advertised it and people know about it so trademarks have not only an information function wherein they give information about the product but they also have a function of promoting the product because many advertisements go beyond supplying information about the product they also go to promote the product they sometimes encourage users they sometimes encourage users to take up and to buy the product and to use the product now registration as we saw started off only after the relief of passing off existed for traders now registration did something which passing off couldn't do now to get a relief of passing off you had to prove goodwill and you had to show distinctiveness by registering a trademark there was no need for you to do the these two things you could just register the trademark and the fact that a trademark is registered you could get a relief against injunction whereas passing off required you to show goodwill and distinctiveness and that that was the first thing that registration did registration removed the need to prove goodwill in an infringement suit the second thing that registration brought about was you could also register for a proposed use 
which means you could get the protection first and then start using the trademark which was not possible for unregistered marks because unregistered marks could only be enforced if they were used the third benefit that registration brought about was the fact that you could assign trademarks without giving away the goodwill of the business so assignment of marks without assigning the business or the goodwill in the business was possible when trademarks were registered because the your assignment was only for the use of the mark without actually giving away the goodwill along with it so the protection that registration brought was the preservation of the uniqueness so your mark had to be unique in fact marks which are overlapping with other marks or marks which are generic in nature or marks which are common to trade cannot be registered so there are absolute grounds on which registration can be refused and there are also relative grounds so we will see them in detail so protection came to be something that was attributed to the uniqueness and uniqueness is a function that we understand that property normally has property is private property especially is something that is unique and identifiable from property that belongs to others when we look at trademarks we also need to understand that trademarks are not a monopoly in the sense that patents or copyright or designs are now there is a reason for this because if a patent is granted it stops a person from using manufacturing selling importing the product that is covered by the patent if a copyright is granted for a book it stops a person from making copies of that book whereas if a trademark is granted it does not stop another person from dealing with those goods it only stops the person from using that trade name that's it so if you are in the business of selling mobile phones you cannot use apple on your phone that's it the only restriction is using registered trademarks which are held by others say motorola or lg or samsung the restriction is only in confined to using marks that are owned by others so you can still enter the mobile phone business because as long as you use your own unique mark and come up with a product nobody can have any grievance against you but if a product is patented say a cure for leukemia and there is a drug that is patented which can cure leukemia the fact that the drug is patented will not allow any other entity to manufacture or to sell that drug so patents in that sense offer a monopoly in such a way that others cannot use or enter the trade whereas trademarks don't offer a monopoly on the goods or services rather it only gives an exclusivity in using a particular name now there are some justifications as to why we should have trademarks now the first justification is that there is creativity involved in trademarks and the creativity refers to the creative association of what a trader is selling with what the public would attribute to that product for instance when the public or a buyer looks at the apple logo the buyer is able to perceive that the goods have come from apple inc then it will satisfy certain requirements of quality 
it will satisfy certain requirements with regard to functionality and various other things the buyer would have known with regard to with regard to products created by Apple. Now all this comes by just looking at the Apple logo. When a person looks at a product and sees that Apple has created or designed that product, then the buyer would attribute so many things because it has come from that entity. Similarly for Nike. Nike does not anymore uh, write N-I-K-E on its products. It just shows or describes its product through the symbol, just like the way in which Apple does. Now, this creative association is something which Apple achieved over a period of time. The fact that people look at the Apple logo and attribute quality, reputation, goodwill and many other things to the product was created by the trader or by the business entity itself. Now there are some objections to this by saying that it is just not the creative association done by the trader but the, the, the public also plays a part because every time a person looks at the Apple logo there is something that the person perceives to be attributed to the company Apple. So there is a contribution that comes from the public as well. So it's just not creativity by the trader but it is also creativity that is perceived by the users. So the first justification is that trademarks create creative association between the manufacturer of the product or services and with the goods that come out of the enterprise. Now because marks can have this creative association there was an incentive to invest in quality because now a person can look at a mark and attribute quality to the product companies started to invest in quality. So that's the first justification that creative association marks so that's the first justification marks came as a way to creatively associate the goods to its origin the second justification was that marks provided information and in a market where there are multiple players selling goods and services there is a need for us to understand information about the product more efficiently. So marks became a shorthand for supplying information with regard to a product. So you could see the logo of say Tata or Suzuki or Honda and you can immediately attribute certain things about the product by just looking at the logo. So it improved the way in which information was supplied to the customers and we will later on look at the dispute between Hindustan Unilever Limited and Amul where the fact that information supplied through the mark led to dispute between these two entities. The third justification is one of fairness the fact that the trader came up with the association the trader should be allowed to reap the benefits of such association and linked to this is the fact that if someone else exploited the association then the law should intervene to stop that person and this also had uh, was tied to the fact that um, that because a trader has used the mark over a period of time and has generated goodwill and reputation it should be in the interest of the market as well that people are not mis misled in into believing that someone else's product is that of the traders product so the fairness part of the marks pertain to 
letting the person who came up with the mark or a uh, association between goods and services and his business enterprise to get the benefits out of that association so we have seen that trademarks can be protected by two means by registration you can protect trademarks and a registered trademark can be enforced before a court of law you can also protect trademarks by what we call the remedy that is offered in common law that is the remedy of passing off so passing off is a way by which you can protect unregistered trademarks but then you need to show goodwill and reputation for those marks 